Hello and welcome to this glorious mess. We are embracing the chaos together and ditching the judgment and I am taking the tolly. And look, this episode I've had to reflect because I may be my own ick sometimes or other people's. I think I am the ick. Well, you're not mine. Okay, well, that's nice. And I'm Annalise Todd. <laughs> I'm a single mother and I am an ick enthusiast. Oh, I bet you are. You would be the queen of icks. I love and, I love And ick. breaking them down and bringing them out. Dissecting. dissecting them. Oh! Live for this. <laughs> I know you would. Well, today on the show, if you haven't already guessed, we are talking about something we've all experienced in some way, and that is the ick. And that parenting can possibly bring out a whole new ick. Like, can it, can it make you see icks that you've never seen before in your partner? Well, it has to because it's a whole different side of them and it's a whole different dynamic to your relationship because you go from just being the two of you to yeah. then another person or other people. And, and more pressure. Like, I think I am icky. I think, I, like, I look at myself as a parent, I'm like, oh, I can't think of too many about my husband. Like, maybe that's because I'm just tuned out. <laughs> but, like, I reckon I've gotten way ickier. Yeah, you probably him. have. Like, yeah, we'll dive into that. But first, here's what's happening in my group chat. I recently stumbled upon this thing on Instagram and it was like a graph and it showed from the 1940s how people meet their partner up until now in different categories oh. and how it changed. I'll put it in the show notes, but basically it's got different categories. So it might be church, mm. online. The online obviously didn't start until the 90s. It's got at restaurants and bars, through friends, co-workers, like how did you meet your person, your partner, right? And it moves along as the years go by and you see where the different categories rank. So church obviously has dropped down. <laughs> well, on, obviously to begin with in the 40s, online, they're like, what Didn't is exist. the internet? <laughs> Who is the World Wide the, Web? The wireless. <laughs> <laughs> We've still got a dial in by telegram. <laughs> anyway, so we're still using Morse code over here. <laughs> Will you date me? Tap, tap, tap. No, so <laughs> we're, losing, we're losing the track. Um, uh, by the end of it, you see that online comes racing from the bottom mm. right up to top and is 60%. As in today? Uh, yeah, in 2024. Online makes for 60% of the ways that people meet mm. their little partners. Well, I met my boyfriend online. My boyfriend. <laughs> my boyfriend oh, online. Is that a hard launch right now? <laughs> I, mean, I think we've done a soft launch in, in a previous episode, <laughs> but now we're in a hard launch. I'm in the 60%. Oh. Oh, there mm. we go. See, it's yeah. here and it's happening. See, once upon a time, I feel like I was, um, my husband I met through friends. Actually, and by the way, friends and co-workers is the second, is the second way. Doesn't happen a lot here ranking. at Mamma Mia, <laughs> except in the case of Jesse Stevens and Luca, Mia's son. Other than the, that, there are the no. The only male in the office. <laughs> the only office romance at Mamma Mia's history. It was bound to happen. <laughs> <laughs> so Jason and I, we met through friends and, you know, people that we knew. And but I feel like I was the last generation before online dating. Yeah. Like so what when did we meet? Ten years ago. So I reckon after we met and got married, it was that's when it became really common for people like, Oh, how did you guys meet? Oh, you know, yeah. Tinder or whatever it was. I remember like back before I when I was married. It was like online dating was kind of a bit awkward. It was like eHarmony yeah. and that was it. And it was it was a bit it was seen as a bit of despo energy. Yes, and I think that's because as well you had to pay. Like if you wanted to be on eHarmony, you had to pay. <laughs> and you had to write like full on essays about yourself. <laughs> and and like whereas now with apps, oh, it's like swipe, swipe, swipe. Yeah. Yes. It... It's very easy, obviously. <laughs> um, successful for me. Oh. <laughs> okay, so let's break down. What is the ick? So yeah. the ick is a term used in dating to refer to a sudden feeling of disgust <laughs> or repulsion to someone you're dating or attracted to. So I suppose in in another word, in other words, two things can be true at once. You can be dating, but also be disgusted yeah. and attracted all at the same time. But I think, and the difference is, the ick is when you're the problem. So it could be completely benign. Like it could be. The way well, they... no, I disagree. I think okay. sometimes they can be being icky. Yeah. Like you're being a bit icky right now. Me? 
No, not you. <laughs> like that's me having a conversation to someone I'm ick by. Yeah. So the first reported use of the phrase the ick came from a 1999 episode of Ally McBeal. I Would you believe? I can't believe it was that long ago. But it's all resurfaced in the past few weeks due to the Netflix show Nobody Wants This. And look, oh, if you haven't watched it. Everybody, everybody wants Everybody wants it, yes. But um, Kristen Bell's character Joe suddenly develops the ick for Aaron Brown. His character Noah, um, because he wore, firstly he wore a sports coat, <laughs> and then when he was having lunch with the mum, with her mum, he bought sunflowers and then pronounced brego, brego. <laughs> like uh, brego. brego, and he did the hand as well. Brego. Which, do you know what? I reckon I would do that. I was mm. uh, like in that whole situation. I was Aaron Brody. I was Noah. Adam. Adam Brody. Adam. Oh, Adam. I Adam wasn't Brody. Adam. I was Aaron. But there is a difference between X and red flags. Yes. Well, I think it is. Like, for example, saying prego is pretty benign. <laughs> yes, it's not like damaging. It's not hurtful. like emotional. <laughs> yeah, it's not emotionally abusive. I feel like there's definitely, like, the ick is usually something that's a bit silly. Yes. Like, okay, yes, you're absolutely right. <laughs> we'll dive into our personal icks a bit later. <laughs> I don't have many, but the ones I have are so silly. But do you think that once you're in a relationship and then you have kids, the icks change? Or do they heighten? Do they Are they different? Are we more ickable? I think they definitely evolve and change because it is a different side to someone. And also, like, think about seeing, like, a grown man sing a lullaby. Oh, do you keep coming back to this? I just feel like there's you're like did baby voices or singing lullabies? Yeah, imagine if you're like, do you, do you want a little bubbachino? Like if if like a fully grown man. But is he talking to you like no, that? To the or child. Talking, oh no, if he's talking to the kid like that, that's okay. No ick. We'll go on. Bring out some more. What else have you got? Well, I've got I've I've got a funny dating ick story because it's my funniest story ever. Okay. And it's like post divorce era dating, and this guy was lovely. But I sort of started to get little icks. They were craw- creeping and crawling in and, and I was on the way out. They would like go pick a boo and you go. Ooh. But this one was the icing on the cake. He wasn't an artist. And one day he sent me a photo of two paintings. <laughs> that he'd done? Yes. For you? Just in for, general. For his life. For oh. his, as a hobby. As yeah, a, as, oh, a, as he a, was taking on a new thing. Well, I think it was a thing that Look he at did. your if face just, icking up. You can't even say it, I can feel you? So Wait, mean. so the poor man just wanted to do some arts and crafts and you got the ick. He sent me photos. He should never have sent oh. the photos. They were so bad. Like my nine-year-old could have done better paintings. It was oh. the biggest ick and I never saw him again. Oh, my gosh. So my I have one. Like I couldn't think of many. My worst one that I can remember quite a lot is similar to yours, except this is back when I was a professional singer. So like I was teaching singing, I was touring singing, I was full, it was my full blown paid job. And I went on a date with this guy and this guy knew that, like he knew it. And after dinner, we were back at my house and I had a guitar at my house. Oh God. And he thought he might impress me by picking up the guitar and singing, singing me a song. Like, I'm I, not saying I'm the best singer and no one should no, ever, no, no. like, do music around me, but this guy was not a singer. What was the he song, was not, please? Oh, I don't, I please, can't. Please, please. <laughs> please tell me what the song was. I need, I need to know. Stop. I, don't, I think it was a Pete Murray song. This is the best, worst thing I've ever <laughs> sure heard. sure he won't listen to this I podcast. I hope that, I hope so that sorry. The, same to the bad painter. <laughs> Like me even telling this story, like my my, 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 my myself now would be like, well, that sounds really romantic, That's Tegan. Lovely. A guy took you out to dinner and then went home and sang you a song. But this is what I mean. Like what I said to you about the guy painting you pictures. It's nice. But that's the I thing know. about X. That like it's nothing they've done wrong. No, well, it's quite unexplainable and often irrational. Very irrational. You can't explain it, but for some reason, <laughs> just like in Nobody Wants This, he just wore a sports coat. He did nothing wrong. He got her mum flowers. He was actually really nice. So lovely. He was trying hard to impress her parents. So why is is it a woman thing? Do men get icks? They must. Yeah. Surely. But I I, I do. They feel wouldn't like... dare tell us because no. we're perfect. <laughs> Right from when we become parents, one of my biggest icks and something that really 
grinds my gears mm. is you've just given birth whether it's vaginally or via very, very traumatic surgery, abdominal mm. surgery. It is not an easy process no. either way. You've got a brand new baby, you're tired, you're exhausted, and then the men get oh, yeah. together and they decide, you know what we deserve? To, to go wet. out and have a really great time. Yeah, and wet the baby's head. And have a party and go home and come home, go out and come home late. Smelling of alcohol. Yeah. Well, my wife, who just delivered this baby, is at home, you know, slaving away over it. But congratulations to my sperm. <laughs> to myself. And my sperm. For the they... hard road I've had <laughs> just... over nine months of so, carrying this baby. Wetting the baby's head is an ick. That's yeah, where it Well, begins. you know what? We just need to be smarter. We need to, like, think of our own. Yeah, I don't think that anyone post-birth is in any place to go out and wet the baby's head. And that's well, we, the well, disparity yeah. there. yeah. You're too tired. Well, we need to start like a 12-month tradition. Like when your baby yeah. turns one, mums get loose. Yeah. My parenting ick is, what did you do today? Like just oh, that phrase. Like what did you do all day? No, well, that's not even how they say <laughs> it, but that's how I translate mm. it. So like, you know, <laughs> like what else do you ask someone that's home raising a kid? Like you'd be like yeah. just trying to make small talk, right? Like, hey, how yeah. was your day? What did you do? And I'm like... I always like, maybe this is, see, maybe Defensive. you're right. Maybe this is myself. It's your issue. And I'm issue. like, what do you mean? What did I do? It's my ick, but it's my problem. It's just, in, right. in therapy speak, that would be your issue. Yeah. Okay. Maybe I'm the red flag. <laughs> 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 but this is what I mean. I think I've gotten ickier. Like, you know, I, I, I feel like since I've become a parent, I've been, become more naggy, more yeah. irritable. Like that must be icky. Yeah. It, all of a sudden you were this like was professional very... singer songstress like sex goddess and you're like out there in the club singing and then you're so, like and easy banjo going. where's your shoes yeah i'm easy going <laughs> Hurry up. i'm like yes yes <laughs> yeah i used yeah i reckon i've gotten way here maybe you'll come out of it because i definitely feel like in my post divorce era and my glow up i have just lost all those icks i'm just like <laughs> swanning so through so life. i need to get divorced is what you're saying <laughs> Look, i'll become way less icky i don't want to i don't want to recommend it it's not the easiest it's not the easiest path but it is a path just uh, saying all right well hopefully one ick is not about whether your partner can cook or not because right now we're heading over to dinner time my name is Michelle and I have myself and my two boys, my seven-year-old and my nine-year-old at my dinner table. I don't know anyone who has a non-chaotic dinner. I guess for us it is, oh, it is a bit of a time to connect. We're so busy in the evenings. We'll often just talk about our day. We'll do peaks and pits. So that's really fun. And then we also, something that is quite unique actually, I went and bought some conversation cards, that family conversation cards that kind of stimulate conversation. And it is so, so useful. It actually calms the chaos because everyone's kind of looking at their food normally and arguing about whether they like this or they want that and too hot or too cold and not enough salt. And actually it takes the focus away from the food and into our conversation and our connection. Our dinner space area is a big round parquetry table and I love that it's round actually because we can all lean in and grab the food that we need. No one is on an edge or anything like that. But we also spend a lot of our time having dinners out on our courtyard. Um, I just love eating outside, especially in the warm weather. Also means a whole lot less cleanup. My kids are so messy. There is always food going everywhere. so. It's a lot less stressful when we're outside and the food goes on the floor. The first recipe I was taught to make, I couldn't even tell you, I am not a cook. I'm not a good cook. It's never been a big thing in my family. Food, especially with my kids, is what is everyone going to eat? What is the easiest thing? So I would say spaghetti bolognese is probably a recipe that gets thrown around a lot in our house. Favorite meal as a child, I was a very fussy eater and I think this is why I also have fussy children. <laughs> there were lots of jokes amongst my family and my friends that I would only eat yellow food. I would live on chips and nuggets and <laughs> all those types of things, pastas, pizzas. The comforting fact in that is that when I have fussy kids myself and they're not eating their dinners, I survived 
I know they'll survive as well. We balance it out with fruit here and there throughout the day. You go through the fussy period and then you come out of it. The meal I find most intimidating is roast. I find cooking meat in the oven really intimidating. Happy with veggies, no problem there, but I just don't know how long it needs to be in there. Am I gonna overcook it, undercook it? It's just too risky and so that's not my thing. Music is a real point of contention in my house because each of us have a very, very different taste in music. So someone will call out to Alexa and say, play this music. And then my other son will say, no. And then I'll say, what about a bit of Taylor Swift? And they both say, no. Inevitably, we start off with a little bit of music and then it gets turned off because there is a big fight and we just eat in silence. Well, that's a lie. We don't eat in silence. We have a big conversation instead. We can't agree on music. It's too hard. My boys are seven and nine and they have such different tastes in music. One is into real kind of electro style music and then the other one is into kind of acoustic guitars and then I'm into mainstream pop. So we cannot agree. Teagues, I reckon it's so common in that first early period when you've just had a baby and either you're bottle feeding or breastfeeding and you've constantly got a newborn on you, it is so common to have the ick about sex with your partner because you just don't want to be touched. Oh, yeah. Like even the thought of like someone in your personal space is icky. Just do not touch Like anyone and anyone, like not even just your partner, but you're like just no one. Like... (laughs) I just want to shower in silence, but then you'll probably hear your phantom baby cry. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like you're just so out touched, out, out talked, out everything. Yeah, and it's that's nothing that a partner has done wrong. Mm. They're just existing and wanting to be intimate. It's so common for women in that period to not want to be touched. I think as well when we become parents, is it an ick or is it resentment? Oh. Because. I think they're two very different things and I think an ick is silly, which we've touched on and we're the assholes, e.g. the painter and the singer. singer. Well, lack thereof, singer. (laughs) But if there are actual issues in a relationship when you've had kids with someone and it's building, I think it really is more resentment than an ick. Yeah. Yeah, I think you're right. But also I'm no doctor. I think there are also some hormonal changes that happen after you have a baby where you, like you physically are like the sex right now. Like your yeah. body goes into like, you know, provider mode for you, for this baby. Like that you're not even thinking about that. And really because. Well, and if you are, good on you. Nature is trying to protect you from what yes. happened to you. <laughs> Having a baby so soon. Silly, silly woman. You had, what was the twins first and then you had banjo yeah. within a year. Well, that yeah. should not have happened to you. No, and I'm very or sorry. anyone. You should not. I've been having sex. What were you thinking? That was the ick. <laughs> myself. See, I'm completely icking myself out here. <laughs> Don't do it, guys. No. If you are feeling resentment in a relationship and it's something that's ongoing, mm. there really is. I, I was having a read of some advice from relationship expert and celebs go dating star Paul Carrick Brunson. Yeah. If it's an ick, which we've said is pretty benign, like even it could be with your husband or wife they get into bed and their feet are cold oh, or yeah. may, maybe they cut their toenails in front of you because I feel like oh my god toenails is definitely it's one disgusting or like the pi- yeah, ugh. like I don't want to <laughs> even hear the little clipping oh no way I don't want to hear I don't want to see it even if I can't hear it so if it's something benign like that okay so first you identify is that a behavior that if they turned it off would you be turned on And then next is you communicate it. So please do not cut your toenails in my orbit. That is a solo activity that you do when nobody else is home, preferably not me. Yeah, but see, I do it, but I hate it when he does it. (laughs) Well, I'm definitely not at that place. And then the most important is that you negotiate a behavioural change and you say, please don't cut your toenails in front of me or maybe put some socks on before you hop into bed (laughs) because you want to have the ability to negotiate in a healthy relationship. But this is important. If the ick has moved to a place of disgust Mm. and true contempt, then you need to see a professional because, as I love being the cautionary tale in the room, contempt contempt is the number one reason why divorce happens. It's that feeling of being superior to your partner. And if if an ick has moved into resentment and contempt, then definitely go and see a relationship expert Mm. and counsellor. Get some help. Do you reckon kids can give us the ick? 
I'm funny about baby voices. <laughs> I've got a real funny thing about like when your kids do, speak in a baby or voice. Or just anyone. Yeah, you just have I, a general baby voice. Oh, well, why do you have a thing with baby <laughs> voices, Denise? <laughs> What's the matter with you? <laughs> Am I kidding you now? I feel sick. Oh my <laughs> gosh, that's so funny. Yeah, my kids actually started saying, "Me want to do this" or something oh, like me, and I like no. I was like, "Uh, uh-uh. uh." Like, no. when did this start happening? Mm-hmm. Banned. Like, so then I literally was like, "Next person to say that gets one less minute on their iPad for every time you say it." Well, thank you for listening to this glorious mess. If you have an ick. Look, we might might not be after this. The ick specialists. If it's the, gone too far, the experts. One might oh! say. You're so punny. You're so punny. You're so punny, Annalise. Google. <laughs> um, obviously, it's beyond our uh, pay grade. So, you know, there's. I'm, being, I'm sure there's people, some experts out there. If the ick has moved to contempt, go and see, see an expert. An expert. <laughs> <laughs> and we'd love to hear about your icks as well. Please we'd share them. Love, we'd love to hear. Literally, I live for ick stories. Okay. You love icks like I love baby baby reveals. Um, yeah. Gender reveals. Oh, I hate gender reveals. Yeah. <laughs> well, if you have a dilemma that you would like Sarah Marie to solve, you can send us a voice note by following the link in the show notes or get in touch with us at tgm at mamamia.com.au. This episode was produced by Grace Rouvray with audio production by Lou Hill. See you next week. <laughs>